Hey everyone. So welcome back. Uh, uh, in this in this video, we are going to talk about the persistent volume. In previous video, uh, we talked about the volumes. Uh, if you are following my videos, uh, you know they are like full concepts that we were talking about in the previous video. The very first is the volume, then persistent volume, then storage classes, and the persistent volume claim. So till now we have seen the volume which is existing in context of the pod only and has a no effect if inside container is getting restarted or deleted. But volume will be lost if pod goes, means as per the life cycle of the pod. And we covered all the different types like Azure disks, Azure files, empty dir, secret, config mac, config map in previous videos. So in this video, we'll, we'll talk about the persistent volume. As the name says, it's gonna persist, right? So now think this, uh, this is not the only scenario, right? There are scenarios where we want volume should be available beyond the life cycle of the pod. In case pod, crashes or recreates on a different node, it should have the volume or data which old pod was using. So these kind of volumes are called are called persistent volume. You can simply think with the name, it's persist, it's gonna persist beyond the life cycle of the pod. Doesn't matter if pod recreates on a different node, the volume still persist and pod would have the access of that data. So uh, where pods often expect their storage to remain if a pod is rescheduled on a different host during a maintenance event, especially in stateful sets. So uh, a we also call it PV. So a, a, a PV is a storage resource created and managed by the Kubernetes API that can exist beyond the lifetime of an individual pod. Well, I have mentioned a couple of times the key point to understand the PV, and I hope this, this is clear now. Now, if we uh, again go back to types, we do have uh, Azure resources like Azure Disk and Files. For, that we can create as a persistent volume. What is we here? We means the Kubernetes cluster admin. They can create in uh, statically, okay, to be used. Or if pod request for persistent volume, if it is not there, it can also be created dynamically. Get your point. Stay with me. You you'll understand. So. Persistent volume could be created uh, statically and dynamically. If it is creating uh, statically, it would be taken care by the cluster admins where you create these in advance. Uh, but let's suppose you have your manifest file where pod needs the persistent volume and there is uh, no static uh, volume available. In such scenarios, Kubernetes API uh, create the uh, dynamic, dynamically, okay? So let's understand if a pod is scheduled and uh, request unavailable storage, Kubernetes uh, can create the underlying Azure disk or file storage and attach it to the pod. Why I'm saying it third time? Because I just wanted to uh, keep your attention uh, it is, we are, we are getting into a different concept now. Till now, we are talking about the persistent volume and statically created by Kubernetes cluster, disk and files could be used as PVs. But if it is happening dynamically, then you need to understand dynamic provisioning uses storage classes. And Storage classes has a lot of uh, uh, policies that we need to understand. So I think I should uh, create a separate video for the for the storage class. Uh, and let me quickly take you through the diagram that I showed in the previous video. 
Uh, let me share my screen quickly. There we go. All right. Now, if you see, uh, this is what we have seen before for concepts, volume, PV, storage, classes, and PVC. That's why I was just repeating the last sentence because we were entering into the storage classes. So volume was, uh, as I said, uh, it's as per the life cycle of the pod, not the container though. Uh, you know, there are containers inside the pod and those containers are gonna use that volume. But if pod deletes, there is no volume. And these are the five types of volumes for of volumes, empty for for the for the temporary data utilized by the containers, and we have secret as the name says it is to inject the secret config map to 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 get the key value pair properties uh, into the pods for the application configuration, and these are uh, the data you know. The storage, you could have used it as an Azure disk. If, it, if multiple pods are using, then a, a, a Azure files. Now, till now, everything is clear. We talked about the persistent volume today. Now, it could be Azure disks. It could be Azure files, OK? As I mentioned previously. And these could be created statically, OK? And uh, if it is created uh, dynamically, then we are getting into, you know, storage classes. So, all right. So this is this is a very small video to understand the concept. There is two left. I think I'll cover both in the next video. And uh, uh, as soon as this part is done, we'll start with the lab again going back to the labs and very quickly we'll start the security as well security for the kubernetes security for the azure uh, and few videos related to the uh, uh, issues or the <clears throat> uh, or the uh, ideas or things that you may encounter in your environment during your architecture so let's meet in another video till then take care goodbye